Hey, Mary. Caleb is going on a business trip from today, right? Has he left already? Hey there, Linda. Yeah, that's right, he is. He has already left, actually. Not too long ago. Is there something that you wanted from him before you left? Or is something else up? I was just wondering when he would be coming back, that's all. I think he will be back in about a week or so. Oh, so I guess that means that you have a whole bunch of free time for a week then. Isn't that nice? Well, I wouldn't really say that. <laughs> and why not? If Caleb isn't around, doesn't that mean that you have more time than you normally would? I mean, sure, in some way, but I still have my part-time job as normal as well. Plus, since he is out of the house, I was planning on doing a deep clean of the house since it's more difficult to do that when there's someone else around. So, I wouldn't really say that I'm just flush with free time. What are you talking about? You two live in an apartment, so it's not that big, and cleaning shouldn't really take that much of your time, right? Instead of that, there is another place that you should be cleaning instead. Uh, what? What do you mean? Where would that be? I'm talking about my house, of course. Since my husband died, I have had to look after this place all on my own. As my daughter-in-law, you should really come without me even asking and help me out, but... You don't get it unless I say it straight out. Oh, I'm sorry about that. You really should be thinking more about what you could do to help me out, you know? I don't want to have to say it myself all of the time. I know that it's a bit last minute, but could you come round today to clean up for me? Today? You want me to come by today? It's still only around midday, so you still have plenty of time, right? There's a bunch of things that I want you to clean for me. Well, actually, I need to go somewhere to pick up a package that I bought in the evening. Yeah, but that's the evening. You still have plenty of time until then. Give them a call and change the time. Okay, sure, I will do that then. I will head over in a little bit. I also want you to cook some dinner for me while you're here as well. It's just been so hot recently that I struggle to have the energy to make anything for myself. So, can you stop in at the store on the way here and buy some ingredients? It would be best to make a brunch that will last me for the next few days, I think. So make sure to get enough food from the supermarket for that. Okay, then I will stop at the supermarket on the way too. Was there anything specific that you wanted? No, you can just buy something that you know how to cook. But, but you are still not doing what you're supposed to be as my daughter-in-law. I'll make sure to teach you exactly how you're supposed to act in the week before Caleb comes back. Mary, I'm eating the food that you cooked for me a few days ago. And I have to say the flavor is really lacking something. What is this? How did you even make the food taste like this in the first place? I have never had something so bad in my life. Oh, sorry about that, Linda. I tried to cook something that you gave me a recipe for before and cook it like you taught me to, but I guess it didn't work out as planned. I did my best, though. I don't want to hear excuses from you. You must not have listened to me properly when I was telling you how it was done. If you did it like I taught you, then it would have turned out much better than it did. I'll make sure to be more careful next time then, to make it more to your liking. I wonder if being careful as you say will even do anything at all. That doesn't seem to be the problem. At this point, I think it's more of an issue of talent than anything. You just don't have the knack for cooking, it seems. Really, I don't know how you have been making food like this for Caleb this whole time, and he hasn't said anything to you about it. Oh, well, I'm sorry that you think it's not up to standard. 
If you really are sorry, then instead of apologizing, you should just put in some more effort to get better at cooking. Also, it's already been about four days since you came to clean up my house for the first time. But you still haven't even finished cleaning the second floor. Why is it taking so long for you to do? Were you just pretending to clean but then slacking off while I wasn't looking or something? I haven't been slacking off at all. But I had to take everything down and put it outside to make it easier to clean and to clean the dust off of everything. Plus, I needed to clean the insides of all the drawers and check the boxes of clothes to make sure that there weren't any moths inside, eating all the clothes. It just takes a lot of time, no matter how fast I try to work. But there are only two rooms upstairs in the first place. It shouldn't take anyone that long to finish cleaning it. Why are you going so slowly? Well, just like you said before about it being too hot for you to want to cook, the rooms upstairs are boiling hot. And having to move furniture around and clean in that heat is making it really difficult for me. Won't you just let me turn on the air conditioner to make it a little easier for myself? Oh, here we go. You straight away want to find a way to make it easier. You know, there are people who work day in and day out in the scorching sun. Do you think they have any air conditioning to make it easy on themselves? Of course they don't. But you are out of the sun and inside the house and you still can't work properly without complaining. Even if it's in the shade, the heat still makes me sluggish and it's hard to do too much. That's just proof that you're always lazing around and aren't used to working. In any case, under no circumstances are you to turn on the air conditioner. I'm the one who is going to be having to pay the electricity bill, you know. And I don't want to be paying electricity that you used and not me. Linda, you know that more people get heat stroke from being inside hot rooms and not from the direct sun, right? Don't be so soft. I don't want to hear that from you. Anyway, tomorrow you don't have to worry about the second floor. You can weed the garden instead. If you're outside, then you shouldn't have any complaints then, right? But the weather forecast said that tomorrow is going to be one of the hottest days this year. You want me to be out there all day? Of course I do. My garden is pretty big and there are a bunch of weeds popping up all over the place. I even had some people commenting on it when I had them around a little while back. And it's only gotten worse since then. Really? Who said something like that? Well, it was my husband's brother, Steve. He doesn't live that far away and drives past sometimes, I guess. When he was around last time, he kept saying that I need to look after the yard more, or it will make the rest of the neighborhood look bad. My husband passed away, but his relatives still live nearby. You have no idea how frustrating that can be. If you have been doing your job properly and had come to help me before then I wouldn't have had to hear complaints from other people. Okay, I understand. Then tomorrow I will focus on getting rid of all the weeds in the garden. Make sure you come early in the morning. You have a day off from your part-time job, don't you? Yeah, I do. I'll come by around 8 then. How is that? Well, since that's pretty early and I don't want to hear any loud noises from the morning... Make sure you eat everything by hand. Uh, what? You mean I'm not allowed to use any tools to do it? Of course not. Weeds need to be taken out with the root or else they will just grow back straight away. You need to make sure that you pull out every last one from the root and make the garden look nice and presentable. Remember... I told you before that this is what you're supposed to do as my daughter-in-law. Time for you to learn how to really put your back into things. If you hadn't been slacking before, then you wouldn't have had to do so much work now. If you want me to accept you into this family properly, then you had better listen to what I tell you. Mary, 
Where is my lunch? Why isn't it ready yet? Oh my god. I just looked outside too and the yard is still a complete mess. You haven't finished the weeding at all. What do you think you're doing? And now you've just left all of the tools you were using and run off somewhere without finishing the job? And what about you? Where the hell did you run off to? Where were you? What? How dare you talk to me like that? It's none of your business what I was doing. Don't just slack off and leave to go somewhere else. Come back here right now and finish what you started. Shut up. Mary just got taken to the hospital, you know. What are you talking about? What's been up with you? This isn't how you're supposed to be talking to me. Linda, this isn't Mary. This is Steve. What? Steve? Why would you be on the phone now? Yeah, exactly. It's Steve. What are you talking about? Stop messing around, Mary. I won't believe what you say just because you're pretending to be Steve right now. Enough of this already, Linda. Mary's in an ambulance being taken to the hospital right now. I left my phone at home, so I'm using hers instead. Is this really, Steve? Yes, it is. Like I said before. I just walked past your house not long ago, and I saw Mary on the ground in the garden. She was passed out, so I called an ambulance, and we're on our way to the hospital now. Oh, is that so? I didn't realize that was what had happened. I was sure that she just ran off to try and get out of doing the gardening. I'm so sorry that Mary has caused you this trouble, Steve. She really can be a handful, that girl. I will go and meet you at the hospital, then. Do you know where you are being taken? No, there's no need for you to come. You have no use here. You should just stay there and finish the gardening off yourself. It still needs doing, right? Come on, stop with those kinds of jokes. It's over a hundred degrees outside right now. I can't be in the garden pulling out weeds in this kind of heat. It's impossible. So you're okay with making Mary do it for you in the sun, but you can't do it yourself? She said that she could do it, so I asked her for help. She basically volunteered to do it. And there is a big difference in our ages as well. She is much younger than me, so it's not as hard for her as it is for me. Recently, my lower back has really been causing me a lot of trouble, you know? Since I'm using Mary's phone, I saw the messages from before that you were sending her as well. Don't lie to me and tell me that she offered or said that she would do it for you. Listen, Steve, Mary is a complete good for nothing. So I thought I would have her to do some work and cure her of her laziness. That's all. If anything, this is being kind to her. I'm helping her grow as a person. Mary is a good for nothing? She always helps people whenever they need it. She even helped me with the spring cleaning before. And when my daughter gave birth, she was always around, helping her around the house and going to the shops for her as well. Plus, when you hurt your back and no one could take you to the doctors, Mary was the one who came and drove you there and back from your appointment. What about all that makes her good for nothing? I can't see that at all. No, she's just really good at seeming like she is a nice person, but it's all just an act to trick people into being on her side. If that was the truth, she wouldn't have put herself through the pain of weeding in this damn heat. And last time, I gave you some money so that you could hire someone to clean up the garden for you, didn't I? Where did that go? Why is Mary doing it instead? That's only because she said that she wanted to do a little work outside, that's all. There isn't a single message like that in your text history at all. But whatever, let's leave it at that for now. Once Mary is feeling better, we can all discuss this together. Discuss it together? What do we need to discuss? Ever since my brother died, I've tried to help you out when I could, since I lived pretty close. I even left you money as well for certain things. You're still part of the family, even though my brother has passed away. That's why I try to still be around to help. But, but that seems to have been a mistake. If you have enough energy to harass your daughter-in-law, then you can look after the house and go out and work for yourself. Hold on a second, Steve. You don't need to go that far. That will put me in a hard situation if you stop helping me out. 
I really don't have any money to be able to support myself without you. My brother should have left enough behind for you to be just fine. If you don't have enough to get by, that just means that you have been wasteful up until now. Like I said, I always thought of you as family and wanted to help as much as I could, but I'm not going to do that anymore. Steve, please, I'm sorry about what happened before. But can't you rethink your decision? I still really need your help to survive. I can't get by on my own. Anymore. This has already been talked about and decided on. I'm not going to help you anymore. And just because I live nearby, I don't want you coming around to my place either. If you come to my house, I'm going to call the police on you and have them remove you for trespassing. What? Uh, you're going to call the police on me? On family? That's going way too far, don't you think? You don't need to do something like that. We have gotten along so well up until now as well. Why would you even say that to me? No, I have done my best to get along with you, but you have never done anything in return. Not for me or for anyone else in the family. You couldn't even come and help when my mom got really sick and needed someone to look after her at all. But even though you didn't do that, or have any relationship with her at all, you still tried to go after her inheritance when she died. Well, she had always been really rude to me, so I didn't really want to show my face in front of her. That's a normal reaction considering the relationship I had with her. All she did was try to give you some warnings about how you were spending your money, but you started complaining that she was harassing you and making your life a misery. You were the one who tried to make her look like the bad guy in the situation. But I was young back then, so I made some mistakes because of that. Neither I nor any other relatives have any intention of looking out for you anymore. I feel bad for my brother that I can't look after his wife now that he's gone, but I think I have done enough already. Steve, come on. I am really sorry. I will make sure not to spend money the way I have been. So, please, isn't there a way that you could be convinced to keep sending me some money for my expenses? Don't make me repeat myself. I hate doing that. I told you that this conversation was over and I'm not going to keep helping you. It doesn't matter what you say to me, my decision is already final. And if you want to apologize, you're apologizing to the wrong person. You should be apologizing to Mary and not me. It seems as though you haven't even said a single word to her yet. That's only because she ended up blocking my phone number so I can't message her. Otherwise, I would have apologized to her already. You know that. Then you should have gone through Caleb and asked him to apologize for you. There were other ways to do things if you really had the thought to do so. But he also stopped replying to my messages and won't answer my phone calls either. I can't get through to both of them. I'm not surprised about that either. The first things out of your mouth at the time were just complaints about Mary and not an apology. Of course no one will want to talk to you now because of that. You couldn't even admit that you did the wrong thing but tried immediately to pass the blame onto someone else. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's no wonder that even your own son wants nothing to do with you now. Fine. I understand. Look, I won't ask you for help anymore, okay? But in exchange, will you help me improve things with Caleb and Mary again? So that you can ask them to support you instead of me? Even now you're going to keep thinking only of yourself, aren't you? Well, I think they earn enough to be able to do that. It won't be a big ask of them. Or maybe they will let me move in with them so that I don't have to worry about this big house. Linda, you still don't understand the situation, do you? Caleb and Mary don't want anything to do with you ever again. But the two of them are really kind, so I'm sure that they will do something if I ask them for it. I really can't believe you. It's incredible that you can even think like that right now, but luckily for you, I'm actually with Mary right now, so I will put her on now. Wait, what? You're with Mary? Hi, Linda. It's been a few days. Oh, Mary, it's so good to hear from you. I was trying to call you and Caleb, but I couldn't get through at all. I was so worried about you, you know? I'm so sorry that this all happened because I asked you to pull the weeds from my garden. I never thought that you would have passed out from the heat. Enough with the apologies. I don't need it from you. Just as Steve said earlier, I don't plan on having anything to do with you anymore. 
Don't say such sad things like that. We can get along like we used to, right? I know that I was wrong and I regret what I did. I was far too strict on you and I promise that I won't ask you to do anything like this again. I know that you're a kind soul, so you will forgive me, won't you? No, actually, I won't. I won't forgive you. Wait, really? You're joking, though, right? But I said that I won't be harsh on you anymore. Everything will be just fine. I think we should be able to get along even better than we did before. You're joking, right? I don't want to get along with you at all, you know. Why would I want that now? What's going on, Mary? This doesn't seem like your usual self. You're never like this, usually. And what is my usual self, then? What is that you're referring to? Is it the me who would listen to everything you told me to do no matter what it is? Or maybe the me who wanted you to accept me because you are Caleb's mother? Is that what you're talking about? Well, yeah, I guess it is. I want the two of us to get along again, so you will forgive me, won't you? No, I won't do anything of the sort, as I said already. You put me through a lot, and in the end, I even fainted from the heat and the work you were making me do. But I finally realized. I was wrong to just listen to everything just because you are Caleb's mom. I thought that we were a family, so I wanted to do whatever I could to help you out when you needed it. I did my best for you, but it was a mistake on my part to do that. But now, Steve and Caleb are both telling me that I don't need to worry about that anymore. But listen, I won't act like I did before. I've had a complete change of heart, and of course I was thinking of accepting you into this family as well. I won't do anything mean to you anymore like before. Oh, so you did realize that what you were doing was wrong this entire time? Let me tell you that the person who has things like that done to them won't forget it. And I know that the only reason you're even apologizing to me now is because Steve said that he will cut his financial support to you. A fake apology like that isn't going to fool me. It's not a fake apology. I really regret it from the bottom of my heart. I don't think someone who is really sorry would actually say that. I have no expectations or anything from you anymore. The same goes for Caleb, Steve, and the rest of the family. You should just pretend like we don't exist and live on your own from now on. No, don't say that, Mary. Please, forgive me. I really am sorry. And if you forgive me, then I'm sure that everyone else will listen to me as well. We can all go back to how it was before. No, Caleb already decided himself that he doesn't want to have anything to do with you. You're the only one who wants to go back to how things were before anyway. He was also upset that I didn't tell him about any of this before as well. And he's right. I should have told him how you were treating me earlier. But it's too late to think about that now anyway. It was he who suggested cutting you off in the first place, you know. It wasn't my idea. He said that he can't think of anyone that abuses his wife as family. Please, don't abandon me like this, Mary. We don't need to take this so far. I just got a little ahead of myself and felt spoiled by your kindness. But I promise that I really will change from now on. Don't say things like you will cut me out of your lives. If you realize that you are taking advantage of my kindness, then... Don't keep trying to do it now. I have no reason to forgive you, and neither does anyone else. Good luck and goodbye. After that, Linda tried to come by our house to talk to us in person, but we ignored her. And didn't let her in until she left. She then also tried to go around to Steve's house and some other relatives, but they did the same. Once, she even tried to break into Steve's house to steal money from him, since he stopped giving her money, but he called the police on her. She was let off with a warning, but he told her that next time that she tried something like that, he would press charges, and so she stopped causing trouble for everyone after that. In the meantime, my husband and I moved house to somewhere that Linda doesn't know 
so that we could start a new life without her interfering. Now that she has no one to help her out, she has to rely only on her pension and she can barely get by on that, so it seems like she is not living a great life. We happened to drive past her house one time, and it looked as though it were completely abandoned, with no signs of life at all. However, some people who we know from the neighborhood said that they still see her from time to time at the supermarket, so I guess she is still alive and well. I did want to get along with Linda since she was part of the family, but I realize now that I shouldn't have put myself through so much to try and get her approval. I should have let Caleb know about how she was treating me sooner than I did. But having said that, I don't regret what happened, and we are better off now without her around. From now on, I just want to focus on the people in my life who meet me halfway and support me in times of need, and create a good life for myself, my husband, and any kids we might have in the future.